Welcome to the Crown Casino in Melbourne, Australia, where for five days the world's top poker players have battled yes! 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 and been busted, rivered miracles, and been sent to the rail. Only four have survived, four men still with a dream of winning the prestigious Crystal Trophy and the $1.5 million that goes with it. Two are well-known pros among the very best in the business. I'm an incredibly difficult guy to play against in tournaments. People expect me to be a little bit crazy, and I'm not sure they know what to do with that craziness. And two have come out of nowhere to live out the fantasy of every poker player. I'm, I'm loving it, just having such a ball. If I were to win this, I probably would be a bit more famous, which will be kind of cool. Tonight, see who will leave Australia with newfound riches and move one step closer to the title of Aussie Millions champion. From the beautiful Crown Casino in Melbourne, Australia, FullTiltPoker.net presents the Aussie Millions. And we welcome you once again to Melbourne, Australia. We're at the Crown Casino on the banks of the Yarra River. Barry Tompkins along with noted poker author Michael Koenig. We are down to our final four players. That's our surprise chip leader, Jimmy Fricky, creeping up on six and a half million chips. He can't feel too comfortable because this man's right behind him, creeping up on him, Gus Hansen. Andrew Black has never finished better than fifth in a major tournament. This is a new record for him. Only one Australian remaining in the competition. He is Julius Coleman, and he is short stacked at 535,000 chips. His wife, Ann, and his son, Jake, have to be very proud of the way Julius has played, and why not? Only the second major event he's ever played in, last year's Aussie Millions and this year's. The blinds, 30,000 and 60,000 with a 5,000 ante. Coleman will fold. And Jimmy Fricky with an ace little will bet it out. Raises to 175. Now look at black. Ace king suited. 675,000. We're playing four-handed poker. Two guys with very good hands. Black with the best of it. He raises to 675. And action folds to Fricky. I'm going to play. And he'll throw it away. So Black will take this down with that ace king. And removes a small piece of Jimmy Fricky's huge chip lead. If you're new to the game of Texas Hold'em, here's how you play. Each player is dealt two down cards. Then players decide whether to call, raise, or fold. If two or more players remain, the community cards are dealt. The first three are called a flop, and they're followed by a round of betting. Next comes the turn card, more betting. And finally, the river card. What makes it no limit is that a player can bet all his or her chips at any time. This is called an all-in. In this case, players show their cards, and in all cases, the best five-card hand wins and takes the pot. Four players remaining, fighting it out for 1.5 million Australian dollars, about 1.2 American. Black on a mini rush here. He's picked up pocket queens. 200. And raises. 200,000. 200, yeah. Gus Hansen gets out of the way. Now Julius Coleman. Uh-oh. A6. In a full table, that A6 would probably go in the luck. Four-handed Coleman cool. doing what cool. he believes yeah. is the right thing, moving all in. Black shows him the bad news. So Coleman in serious, serious trouble here. His tournament life very much in danger. And it shows in the eyes of his family looking on. He's going to need a lot of help. Specifically, an ace on the flop will get it done. There There's it is. an ace. Oh, oh, and the queen. You're kidding. Coleman has flopped three aces, and it's no good. Yeah. Andrew Black flops a full house, queens full of aces. You saw the ace, I saw the queen, you saw the other ace. <laughs> Coleman can catch up with a fourth ace or a six. Unbelievable turn of events. We come to the turn. It's a king. Oh, come on. <laughs> with one card Another to go, out. Julius Coleman will need the fourth ace, a king or a king six, or, or he's done with the Aussie Millions. And here is the river. It is a nine, and that will eliminate well Julius well Coleman. Done. The final Thanks. Australian will yes. go away. Excellent. His family, of course, much chagrin. Well, but you know what? It's been an outstanding sir. tournament for him. That's he right. wins 500,000 Australian, which he will donate to help educate underprivileged children in his country. Andrew Black, meanwhile, up over 4 million chips now. <laughs> and the final right. Australian gets a hero send-off. Thank you. And that was three. We are down to three, two seasoned veterans and a dangerous newcomer.
The final table of the RC Millions continues after this. Welcome back to the RC Millions. We began the final table with seven survivors, but Christy Gazes was the first to go. Mark Karam quickly followed as Hans Martin Vogel finished fifth, and Julius Coleman has just been busted. We're now down to just three men and a top prize of more than a million dollars. And here's where we stand. Jimmy Fricky has the lead, but with close to 15 million chips in play, he's not running away with this competition. It's truly anyone's tournament. Well, Michael, Jimmy Fricky came here as a complete unknown, and now he's got two experienced professionals staring at him across the table. The question remains for him now. Will he pass or will he fail? Thus far, he has passed every test. I keep waiting for this kid to wake up and realize where he's at, to say, I'm at the final table of the Aussie Millions. I'm no longer in rural Illinois. But so far, he has been determined, fearless, and aggressive. And I think these pros realize he is not going to lay down for them. Let's see if Jimmy Fricky's fairy tale continues down under. Play continues. 1.5 million Australian dollars on the line. That's 1.2 million American, one of these three. We'll take that home. Jimmy Fricky looks at a king queen and immediately raises to 175. Andy Black will fold. Now Gus Hansen with a king queen <laughs> in the big blind. He gets a discount, but three handed. I don't expect Gus Hansen to just call from the blind. Fricky can raise with a wide variety of hands from the button. Hansen knows that. He looks like he's cutting out a re raise. And he does. 675 to Fricky now. Fricky will have position on Hansen for the rest of this hand if he chooses to call. Or he might just want to push back. No, he does call. So now we will come to the flop. Two players, Hansen and Fricky. Fricky has not blinked. 610 ace on the flop. And neither player wanted to see an ace on the flop since they both have king high. And because they have identical hands, obviously the cards are not going to make the difference. It's going to be the will and the position. And Gus Hansen fires. 800,000 into the face of Fricky. So Fricky must decide. Is Hansen betting an ace there? Makes sense. He raised pre-flop trying to represent a good hand. Whoa! He is going to raise to 1.6 million. I love that play, Barry. It's a double raise. It's exactly double Gus's bet, and that normally means one of two things. Somebody's trying to buy a cheap draw, or he's milking value out of a really big hand. And with king high, Gus can't make the call. And once again, Michael, you pointed this out. It's the aggressiveness of Jimmy Fricky that has won him not only this hand, but all through this tournament has won him hands. He's young, but he knows in order to be successful at this level, you cannot be short on confidence. I think a lot of black players are idiots. Um, 